So I want to share a good tip to anyone that's new with using a lathe machine or a mini lathe, uh, especially the Vivor 8x14 uh, lathe here, is uh, when you're trying to face a, a round bar, uh, so what happens is, uh, where's my facing tool? So here's my facing tool. Um, so this is just for example, I'm not gonna center it and everything, but what happens was I would set my slide here and then when I start facing, you'll see that you start about here and then I'll start cutting and once I get to the middle, it'll kind of push out. So what happens is the slide gets pushed out. So then every time I face something, there was a dome um, so what I found, I did some research and it looks like uh, people recommend locking your slide. But in this Vivor slide, there actually isn't any type of Allen or uh, locking mechanism. So then you would either have to drill or modify this. Uh, and I don't think anyone's mentioned it in the videos I watch, but I end up just using my tail stock to hold the slide in place. So what I did was I would get pretty much near to what where I need to have my bit. I left a little bit of a gap. I would slide this all the way until it bumps the slide, lock it in place. Then I'd roll this backward just to make sure that if it does move, it'll move now and not while I'm cutting. Um, after that, and then you have enough of a gap here. So then after that, I'll do my facing and it made a huge difference. It stopped the slide from going back and then whenever I faced my part they were completely flat. So uh, good tip to anyone who's having problems uh, use your tail stock to hold your slide in place. So this is about the third day since I've had the lathe and I spent a few good hours working on it. Uh, so far I'm, I'm liking it. I got it set up pretty well. Uh, I got this turret with a couple bits, this is the parting tool, this is the facing, no not the facing tool, uh, the turning tool to, to reduce the diameter and then this is the facing tool. So then what I'll do is I'll just face something and I'll loosen this, rotate it, uh, whatever operation I need to do. And then uh, some things that I've added to the the set was I originally bought a vise so I could cut the my round stock, um, but I didn't like how I didn't really have a mount for the vise. So I had it on the floor, I was using the a handsaw and then I used a sawzall, but it was quite a battle. So I was able to get this at Harbor Freight for 30 bucks. Uh, there's a sale right now. so. It's a six inch cutoff wheel. It says it could cut up to one inch round stock. Uh, so this would be perfect for what I need. And yeah, so this is the, what I've been using to cut my round stock or round bar. Uh, and then I bought this uh, MT2 drill chuck. And basically that's what I used to, to do my, my holes. So then right here, you just drop it in here. And then you, this whole thing spins, it allows you to add your bit on there. And once it's on there, it stays in place. And then I'll move it over to my part. Uh, and then the centering bits. So, so far I've done a few spacers, which I'm pretty excited how they turned out. This was uh, the first go. It took me a while, but I got it down right the first try uh, and then I had to do two of them so did some measuring and then cut slowly at a time until I got it to where I needed it and right now I'm working on another spacer uh, this is just cut I haven't done anything to it yet but this is how it ended up afterwards 
uh, I don't have big enough drill bit. I bought the the drill bit set, but I, it doesn't go. I need it to go to 16 millimeters, and right now I'm at only roughly 11 millimeters. So the kit, the Vivor uh, lathe, came with these boring bars, but they're not. They're too big to fit in this hole, or at least to uh, once it's mounted in the turret here. So I ordered a different boring bar set. Uh, it says a six millimeter boring bar. So hopefully that will be able to do this. Otherwise I gotta buy a large drill bit just to do this shim, but we'll see. So when that boring bar comes in, we'll give it a try and see how it turns out. And then I just have a very small file here and this is what I use to clean up the, the edges of my parts. I uh, do the inside and the outside with it, so just to, so it's not too sharp. And yeah, here's the Vivor 8x14 lathe, and here's my setup on the uh, Husky toolbox here. It's about $300 from Home Depot. Uh, so this whole setup was not too expensive. I probably spent, uh, including the, the toolbox, maybe just about $1,000 for everything. So pretty good deal. Oh, and I wanted to add that uh, I do notice when I turn some parts, I'll see metal shavings fly over this right here. So what I'll probably do is uh, we have a store called Tap Plastic and they sell scrap pieces. So I'll probably try to find a one or two dollar piece of Lexan and then I'll just, or, or some type of Pexi glass and I'll just screw it into the back of this. I pop a hole through here and then just a clear window so you'll catch some of the metal shavings that shoot over. Okay, we're back. I went to Top Plastic. I was able to get two of these squares for a dollar each plus tax. So it came out to be about $2.19. So, yeah, I'm just gonna drill some holes into the back cover put this up one over here and then I'll just have to make sure that I could flip this up without it being in the way and I think we're good so let's get to it some M4 Allen screws to secure the plate, the plexiglass onto the back. So we have these and then I'll be using some plastic washers to put between the screw and plexiglass just to protect it a little bit from cracking. And then uh, yeah, we'll make sure we lock tight the bolts also or the nuts because I think from the vibration these will likely come loose pretty quick if they don't have Loctite on them. And on top of that, we'll use a punch to set the hole for the drilling. So we need to get rid of that hole, but we'll be doing uh, three holes, one on each end and then one in the middle for support. And then once I get this one mounted on, I'll mark up the second one and do that also. I got three bolts holding each of these panels. That has a little bit of uneven gap here, but not a big deal. But yeah, now we mount in pretty well. And now I won't have metal shavings flying over there uh, to the other side of the bench. So not bad for about 10 minutes of work and $2, including some bolts and nuts. So which will say about $3 total to make this little clear wall. 